Hello there everybody, welcome and welcome to the Saroy channel. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and I'm so thrilled you've joined me tonight. We've got a wonderful Bigfoot encounter which you're really going to enjoy. And I just want to say guys, I love you listeners, you really are a special breed. So let's get started. Dear Sarah and all your listeners, I'm writing to tell you about my Bigfoot encounter which happened to me very recently in August of 2018 here in Madison, Kentucky. We live here in a decent sized home off one of those rural back roads and we have a plot with a substantial amount of land. Our property borders another home that has long since become abandoned. The people just up and left their property without even taking any furniture with them. Rumours abounded around town that the old place was haunted and that was why the people had rushed away. I do not blame people for making up stories like that because from the outside the place really did look like it could be haunted. It had that horrible, formidable, airy feeling about it. Nobody knows where the family went. I never personally knew them myself, but I wondered if they just ran out of finances to pay their mortgage or something. I mean, why would you just up and leave your property and never come back to it ever again? It seemed extraordinary, to say the least. Anyway, I have two children of my own. One is called Amy and the other is called George, who are seven years old at the time. They are both twin siblings and ever since they were born, they have been inseparable. My children would love to spend hours playing out of doors like every children does. And they always seem to have a great deal of fun. They know how to entertain themselves. I don't ever know what they're getting up to because they tend to whisper and giggle all the time. And they're always up to mischief and look as if they're keeping a whole lot of secrets from me. As their mother, I don't mind as long as they stay out of trouble and behave themselves. After a while, I noticed a few strange things about my children that were a little bit on the bizarre side and worried me ever so slightly. When I was cleaning their room, for instance, I opened Amy's drawer and found some weird kind of things inside it. There were things like feathers, a few smooth-looking river pebbles, a mandible bone of a sheep, another kind of carcass of which I couldn't describe what kind of animal it was, a bird's nest with a couple of unbroken eggs in it. Well, I have to say I smelt the bird's nest and the stench was so unpleasant, so I immediately placed it into a plastic bag and threw it away as hastily as I could. When Amy discovered that I had thrown out her bird's nest, she threw a huge hissy fit and refused to eat her dinner that night in retaliation. And that meant her faithful brother joined in the boycott because he always has his sister's back. Needless to say, I was not happy with their behaviour. Another bizarre thing was that they both appeared to be eating me out of house and home far more than two children of seven should be doing. They would be asking for more and more sandwiches, donuts and bananas in large amounts, which was peculiar. So imagine my frustration when one day I was cleaning their rooms and I found a stash of stale donuts and dried up old sandwiches that were moulding in the cupboard hidden under their PJs. I was furious. What on earth were they doing collecting all this food and allowing it to rot? One day, the teacher at the local school phoned me up. She told me that she was worried about my kids. I asked the class to draw a picture of an animal that they loved, a cuddly animal that they loved from home, and your children, both of them, drew a horrific creature that looked just like a demon. I just thought you should know about it, and I do recommend you get your kids to show you the pictures that they drew. I thanked the teacher and wasted no time in studying the pictures my kids had drawn. The teacher was absolutely right. The creature looked horrible, just like a monster. And it was not a cuddly pet, not like our beautiful little Yorkshire Terrier, which I thought they should have drawn. When they were eating macaroni and cheese at dinner, I did ask them what they had both drawn in class. What are these scribbles that you've drawn on the creature that look a little bit like spikes, I asked. Hair, they both said at once. What is this creature that you have drawn? It's a monkey man, silly, giggled Amy. Who is monkey man, I asked. He's our friend, she said. I began to wonder if they had an invisible friend, like a lot of young kids do, and so I didn't give the matter any further thought. One day when the kids were playing outside, I suddenly heard my daughter let out the shrillest cry. And let me tell you, when you're a mother and you hear your child scream like that, it puts the fear of God right through you. I was terrified 
and ran into the garden as fast as I could. My daughter, Amy, was crying. Tears were pouring down her tiny little face, and she was holding our wet, bedraggled Yorkshire Terrier, Tammy, in her hands. What's going on? I asked. Suddenly I noticed a massive dead snake, a bow constrictor, and it was lying dead on the grass, and it had been ripped in two. It was extraordinary. I'd never seen anything like that. The big snake! Mummy! The big snake! She cried. He was trying to kill Tammy, Mummy. He tried to kill Tammy. He put his body around Tammy. He was squeezing her so tight, Mummy. He nearly killed Tammy. Poor little Tammy was in a dreadful state and was whimpering and shaking. Poor little thing, I thought, taking the Yorkshire Terrier into my arms. She was shaking with fear. I regarded the massive dead snake lying on the ground, torn in half with horror. Wow, who could have done this, I thought. I suddenly remembered the day when two of the teenage boys had one who lived in the abandoned house next door had come to see me. We're looking for our pet bow constrictor. He got loose. We wonder if you've seen him. I told them that I'd be on the lookout for him and would let them know if he turned up. I will admit the idea of a pet bow constrictor wandering around did leave me feeling extremely uncomfortable. I now realised that the thing had been having a good time, getting really fat, fat, hiding somewhere, feeding off rats and vernum. Now it had turned its ravenous intentions onto bigger prey, like Tammy, my Yorkshire Terrier, and this was beyond funny. I soon forgot about the snake and how it had been mysteriously torn up because my priority was to calm down my Yorkshire Terrier. I immediately took Tammy to the vet, who could tell that the poor dog had indeed been literally smothered by a constrictor. Luckily, he said that the throat wasn't crushed and that the body wasn't too badly bruised and that the good news was that she would make a full recovery. One thing he said that I'm curious about is how did you manage to get the constrictor off your dog? Was he still loose, he asked, because those snakes, when they hold on tight, they squeeze the living daylights out of their prey, and they would be hard to loosen. His words echoed over and over in my head. How did my children get that constrictor off my dog? And how was that constrictor just ripped in half like that? Because it was enormous. And how could it have just been torn into two pieces? My children could never have done that, I thought. When I asked my children who had taken the snake off our dog, they told me it was Hairy Man. He lives next door, said Amy. He's the one that gave me the bird's nest, remember? The one that you were so horrible and you threw it away from me. Well, he gave me that bird's nest. I suddenly thought that some homeless vagrant had moved into the next door house and had set up home there. We give him sandwiches and donuts and bananas. Because he likes them, Mum. What's his name? I asked them. He does not talk, giggled Amy. He hides from us and runs away and he plays peekaboo with us. Mummy, guess what? We see him eating bugs and worms. He pulls them out of the ground and he puts them right in his mouth, even with the dirt right on them, Mummy. He really, really likes his worms. What kind of a vagrant was this, I thought? He really must be desperately hungry to be eating bugs and worms. I immediately decided to prepare a large hamper of homemade goodies to say thank you to the vagrant that was living next door for saving my dog's life. I opened the creaky, badly rusted gate of the abandoned property and I walked up the dirt pathway that was now overgrown with weeds and thicket. It was certainly in disarray from obvious neglect, which was really sad. I called out to the man, Excuse me, uh, excuse me, excuse me, hello there, hello, 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 I called out loud. Then I heard a thumping sound, and this frightened face emerged from the shadowy undergrowth, and it looked at me in terror, like a wild-cut cat that is being hunted down. What on earth was this creature, I thought? This is no vagrant, and he was enormous. What happened next only lasted seconds. The creature stood up. As I said, he was enormous and he was covered with thick but fine golden brown hair. And his face had an ape-like look to it. And yet it was distinctly human too. 
put it this way, if it was possible to mix the human DNA with a giant ape DNA, perhaps the outcome would have been this creature. He was about seven foot in height, 500 pounds, and looked like he was very massive in stature. He had a cone-shaped face, gray leathery skin, deep set eyes, and a thin mouth and flat squashy nose. He looked at me for only a second, stood up, and then got up on all fours and raced across the garden. He was definitely more afraid of me than I was of him. You see, it had not dawned on me that this creature was a Sasquatch. It was the furthest thing from my mind. It really was. I put the basket on the ground and went to investigate inside the house. It was filthy, and in the stench in the house was beyond anything I can describe. It was revolting. When I looked around, I found a large, big animal nest on the kitchen floor. It was a nesting area which I imagined was where the creature was sleeping. It was covered with twigs and wild grasses, and strewn over the floors were the bones and carcasses of small animals like squirrel, rabbit and hare. And on the floor was the dead bow constrictor. One half, I imagine the other half, he had already eaten. It was only later that I realised that my children had somehow been gifting a Sasquatch with sandwiches and doughnuts and bananas, and he had been returning the favour with feathers, stones and bird nests. On reflection, I do think this creature was highly intelligent, and I think he realised that my daughter Amy was upset about the snake on Tammy, so he killed it. He just tore it off Tammy, and then he ate half of it. Um, I, I think it was incredible that he was able to tear that creature in half the way that he did, because I know of no animal that is capable of doing that. Why he was af afraid of me, I do not know. He was certainly an intimidating creature and could be dangerous, I, I suspect. I did wonder where the rest of his family was. One thing I knew was that he had intervened to help my child and rescue little Tammy from the tightening grip of a massive snake. And for that, I am truly and forever grateful. I'd love to know the hairy man's story and why he came to be living at the property next door. Luckily, a, uh, luckily, only a couple of months ago, that house, that neglected abandoned house, was bulldozed and brought to the ground, as it was made up previously of bricks and mortar, and a new wooden house has been replaced, and the original building has been replaced by this new wooden house. And now I have new neighbours who appear to be very, very nice and very friendly. No one in our neighbourhood has reported any Bigfoot sightings, so I don't know where the ha hairy man is. But wherever he is, I hope he's happy. I will be eternally thankful for what he did the day when he saved little Tammy from the fearsome predator. So I hope you and your, your listeners enjoyed my story. What a wonderful story. Until next time, good night.